Alrighty, um, so I have a construction update today in park. Thank goodness Wonderland opened. I was getting really nervous last night. I was driving around, had my winter tires on. Oof, thank God for that. Um, but I was driving around and there was so much snow. I was like, there's no way Wonderland's opening, but they did. Thank you so much to everyone at Wonderland. I can't imagine how much work you had to do this morning to even get the park open. Um, there was snow everywhere, so just Thank you for opening. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know before we get into this construction update, even though you're watching it right now, <laughs> uh, we are going to start our giveaways in November. So as you know, we're approaching 10,000 subscribers, which is so awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to be doing giveaways leading up to 10K. And then when we hit 10K subscribers, there's going to be an ultimate giveaway. Um, to be honest, I think it might be one of the biggest giveaways on a Coaster YouTube channel ever. So you're going to want to go check out our Facebook group in the description box down below. Go follow that Facebook group and our Instagram account to stay up to date on how you can participate in our giveaways. So as you see in this area, um, not too much has happened. Um, they've added some markers and uh, they've gotten they're getting ready to pour some footings. So as you can see, there's a couple of footings dug out and with the rebar cages in. Um, and then this is where it gets interesting. I want you to remember this. So STN 35, it is right where the um, Immelman back towards uh, the MCBR is. And it's going to be right underneath it. And that plays in a very important part in our um, a little later on in our construction update. So just remember that STN 35. And I'll let you know when we get to the other one what I think it means. Um, but uh, I find it very interesting. So nonetheless, not too much going on in this area. Um, they had a little bit of the fence. Don't worry, I didn't go behind that fence at all. It's going to look like I did for a second, but then you'll see with my camera when I turn it that I'm actually on behind the fence. Um, so um, as you can see, lots going on. They have the drill bit in. They are dr drilling footings. Uh, when I get over to the uh, Windseeker side, you'll see just how many footings they poured um, this week as well. I think they're all the way over to the uh, vertical loop area now that they're about to pour. So here's a great angle of Yukon Striker. Uh, to be honest, the footprint of the lift hill and the drop is very small. And until you see these angles, you don't realize how small of a footprint dive coasters take up in terms of the lift hill and the drop. So it was definitely fascinating looking at this thing from all different angles around the park. Now, what's even more interesting is how much of Yukon Striker has been built. So as you see in this clip, um, from the bridge over by Lumberjack, you can see that the Immelman is up. Well, not the whole Immelman, but a bit of the Immelman. Um, so in this area, this is what I was talking about. So under those orange tarps are footings. Uh, they are poured, and they always put the orange tarps over them to help them dry. But what's also interesting is, it, did you just see that green? That's what's interesting. So the green there is catwalks. And so what's interesting about that is they already have the catwalks for the MCBR placed where the MCBR is going. Ooh, I feel like I'm saying MCBR too much. MCBR. <laughs> Anyways, the MCBR is going to go over Timberwolf Falls right there, and they have them placed down there ready to go. Now, what's also interesting is they have electrical um, wire and uh, sunlight proof, waterproof uh, tubes underneath the support beams for the uh, Immelman out of the tunnel. Now, <laughs> Ryan's hugging the support beam. Um, so that to me screams lighting effect. So they'll probably not even necessarily lighting effect. Now that orange tape, remember that that's where I want you to pay attention to. So the Immelman, uh, the lighting is probably just going to be lighting like behemoth where it shines up at the coaster. So, um, there's just a closer angle of this. And then you have the actual support column, um, bolted in. And then you're probably looking at this like, well, it doesn't look like it's all the way bolted in. Well, um, from what I understand, and I could be wrong, again, I'm not in construction, but if you look at Leviathan's support beams, they have this, um, the actual footing, and then they have the secondary concrete that forms around it. So I think that goes in after. But uh, comment down below if you actually know the answer to that. So here you have STN 36. So what's interesting about this is um, I'm definitely guessing lighting effect. Um, so those are all connected to the station. Um, that's what usually what STN stands for. And again, Whenever I make um, a prediction or a statement like this, do take it with a grain of salt. I'm not on the construction team, and until I get my behind-the-scenes tours in um, November, I will not be able to ask what it stands for. 
but usually STN, when I saw it on the other parts of the construction, was the station area. So I have a feeling it's connected to the station, and it's probably going to be a lighting effect. It seems to be under the Immelmans. So you have STN 35, STN 36. Maybe there's all the way, there's a bunch of STNs, and maybe it's lighting effects. Who knows what it could be? It could just be lighting shining up at the ride, or it could be a lighting effect. We do know that they're going all out, all out on Yukon Strikers theming, which is really impressive. So this is where it gets really interesting. So it looks like, fingers crossed, they are starting on the station finally. There's markings throughout. Again, you have more of those STN markers in the ground. And then you have like the um, fenced off area. Now, this is where the exit is, I believe. I'm going to put the blueprint up on the screen. Um, and I'm going to have it zoomed in to finally show you guys the entrance and exit. I believe um, the exit is right there where you saw that orange and the entrance is gonna be near Mindbuster. It could be completely reversed to be honest, um, but I'll flash it on the screen and I'll show you guys what it actually is. Um, a lot of the electrical is getting done. In fact, you're gonna see that they have the pre-drop, the holding brake um, installed completely, like the chains in it, the electrical is done up there, the weather station's going up on top of Yukon Striker. Um, it's absolutely fascinating how quickly this construction team is moving. In fact, you know, days where we're like, oh, they didn't lift another piece in. Well, they're still hard at work installing all the little details that we don't really know about in terms of coasters. So you have the electrical, the catwalks, um, the funicular, <laughs> pronounced that wrong, um, the funicular elevator system, and uh, other little smaller details as well. The station's been a constant area. The storage sheds have been a constant area of working. But my, oh my, is this implement going to be impressive. By the way, just to put this into perspective, they have 240 feet approximately more track to install on that implement. Now, take into account it's 188 feet tall from bottom of tunnel up. So it's not actually going to be 240 feet in the air because it's curved but they still have 240 feet approximately of that Immelman to install. Um, so that's going to look insane. So there's that electrical box that we used to think was a ladder. <laughs> um, so the electrical will go up. Um, stairs and railings incomplete. Tie off required. Um, so for those of you that were going to uh, sneak into the park and climb the lift, I'm kidding, don't do that. Uh, you will die. <laughs> so definitely don't do that. Um, but yeah, definitely getting uh, some good shots of Yukon Strikers Lift Hill. You can see that the elevator system, uh, the EVAC or the Sunset Tours, I guess they call them at Cedar Point, um, is done by the looks of it. The electrical is probably not installed and the elevator itself probably isn't installed either down at the bottom because I didn't see it. Um, but the electrical off to the right, which I thought was the ladder, like maintenance ladder, that's all installed too. Now they just got to install the electrical going up and then they'll cover it like you see on Val Raven. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot getting done. Um, and it looks like they're going to start again, the stationary and the theming. And from what I understand, um, this is going to be Canada's Wonderland's longest queue line. Um, so from what I'm predicting and guessing, this is going to be Canada's Wonderland's longest queue line. I'm estimating between seven and 10 switchbacks, all in very large rectangular forms. Um, yeah, and I think we're going to see a lot of different things with Yukon Striker 2. I think you're going to see Cedar Fair testing out a lot of different things. So that's going to be exciting. Um, and here is some awesome shots. So there's the shots of the speakers, of the eagle screech. Um, and then there's the uh, holding brake right there. You got the sensors off to the left of it. The holding brake covered in, you know, Canadian snow. Because it ain't Canada without going to the theme park at least once with a, a snowstorm or snow. So uh, this is my most Canadian trip at Wonderland period. <laughs> um, or Wonderland's just getting really in the spirit and Frontier Canada is going to have like, you know, like snow machines somewhere hidden up in the sky. I'm kidding. Um, that wasn't even funny. That was like a dad joke. But <laughs> it looks awesome. And I, I took some really awesome shots around Wonderland today. So I don't know why I just really love this shot. That's why I did it twice. But yes, um, there's the holding brake. There's the sensors up close. You can see some electrical down below near the spine of Yukon Strikers pre-drop holding brake area. Um, so that was really awesome to get. Um, and oh, yes. So there's more. This is like my biggest construction update ever. It went from doing the smallest one a couple days ago to being like, whoop. So as you can see, lighting and more. So I'm, I, I'm guaranteeing those STNs are lighting. So I actually didn't notice that. See the little orange markers nailed on the ground and then you have the little triangular. So I have a feeling it's going to be lighting pointing up at Yukon Striker. And oh my, 
Um, do I hope for something unique? I really want something unique. As you can see, they have a V-frame support built in the back. That will go in. That's going to be for the Immelman coming um, into the 0G roll or heading into the pullout before the 0G roll. So that will go in. Um, they're probably going to go full force. Now, the construction site, it looks so clean. They got the gravel laid down. Um, lots of rebar cages. I forgot to mention that earlier when I showed the shot of um, the station area. There's rebar cages in square formations and rectangular formations, and that's how I kind of knew that they're going to probably be um, working on the actual formations for the station, the building, and all that. So here are two pieces of the Immelman. Um, so that's about 120 feet right there. 60 feet each is usually the prediction. These are actually probably smaller, so it's probably around 180 to 200 feet in total. Sorry to correct myself from the beginning. Um, but the camera doesn't do the injustice. So there's two more. They're ready to go in. And then they have two more on flatbeds ready to come in on uh, Monday as well. So they're going to be moving really quickly on this implement, I can tell. Um, and the drone will be up in the air tracking construction. Um, and again, thank you so much for following along. A lot of you really like those drone updates. Um, so those will be going all winter. The drone is semi winter proof. I can fly as long as there's no rain or snow. And as long as it doesn't go below like negative 10. Um, and to be honest, uh, I flew most of last winter. So a lot of people are like, what, wait, isn't it always neg below negative 10? No, it's not actually. Winter's pretty warm and mild, except for when we get those really cold days. But as you can tell, they're ready to go. Though That A-frame, or sorry, V-frame. I keep going to say A-frame because, yes, I get it. Everyone's like, why are you saying V-frame? That's an A-frame. It is a V-frame. There's no A-frames on this coaster from what I understand. Um, so we were incorrect early on in the construction updates. So you have Y-frames and V-frames on this. The V-frame, an A-frame has a connector, and the V-frames are just like, you know, the V. Even though it's upside down, it's not in the shape of a V, but it's a V-frame. That's what you call them. So the V-frame will go in. Uh, the bolts are there, ready to go. Um, and other than that, here's some really awesome shots of the Immelman. And it really shows you how large this pullout is on Yukon Striker. It's such a large pullout. Um, it goes under water, it goes under land, it goes in between vortex, and then it comes out into an 188 foot tall Immelman from ground up. So that's going to be awesome as well. And then the view over here is going to change so much. I'm so excited for 2019. I'm so excited for the behind the scenes tours for you guys. Um, I'm really excited to get those behind the scenes tours for you. I can't wait to show you. I know you love them. So if you have, um, Anything you want me to film when we're on those behind the scenes tours, comment down below if there's a specific shot you really want me to get or something about the project you want to see. Again, um, I have a feeling uh, with Frontier Canada not necessarily being announced, there will be some things off limits in terms of filming. And obviously, we're going to abide by whatever the park's wishes are. Um, but yeah, this is amazing. I can't wait to ride. Um, who here already has their 2019 season pass? And Please tell me you got a gold pass. The gold pass is so worth it. I swear to God, this isn't a uh, a sponsorship, but uh, I just feel like Wonderland really deserves it because I'm so excited for 2019. Grab your gold passes because those gold passes are going to get you into Howling Hot. They're going to get you into Winterfest. And then they're also going to get you um, more discounts than I believe ever offered before. So grab a gold pass, get that drink plan, get that food plan, get that parking if you have a car. If not, don't get it. Um, but get all that and your season's set. If you're planning to go like four times in the season, which most enthusiasts are, get that gold pass and soup it up. I know I'm going full out on my gold pass because um, I'll be there a lot. And then I actually am getting a platinum pass. So I'm not getting the gold pass. I'm getting the platinum pass, which is essentially the gold pass, just like gold pass plus. So I can go to other Cedar Fair parks. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this construction update. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I missed from today. Um... I, I, to be honest, um, I don't think so. So again, just to kind of recap it, the STNs, I believe, are definitely lighting. So you're going to see a lot of lighting um, on Yukon Striker, and it, like specifically around like inversions or turns, it looks like. There's always in um, something as a serious area from what I can see. But knowing that there's STN 35 over by the Immelman Loop, is suggesting there's probably a lot of lighting along the way. So that's pretty cool to see as well. The tunnel. So this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. The tunnel is looking really small now. With the track coming out and seeing it all in perspective, 
that's going to be a serious head chopper and arm chopper. Like, I feel like a lot of people, their first time riding Yukon Striker, you're going to see a lot of that. Their hands are in the air and you're going to see them going down, like the hands coming down. And a lot of people losing confidence as they get closer to the tunnel. Again, when we had our behind the scenes tour before, it was told that, you know, it was meant to look like you're falling into a pinhole. Um, so that's really cool. That is what I honestly think makes Yukon Striker extremely underrated. Um, in the especially the American coaster community, but that's totally cool. Uh, a lot of people have only been on basic dives, and you know, a lot of people are are kind of judging this as a basic dive. And I know I'm confident that when they ride this and I ride this, we're absolutely gonna love it. It's an amazing coaster. Um, so thanks for watching my update, guys. Um, and uh, as usual, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. And uh, again, have a great week, guys. Enjoy your Halloween. Bye. <laughs> Where do you think I'm going to be? Amusement Insider.